Hello everyone and welcome back to J1 Aviation where we'd like to review a couple questions on the FAA, a couple potential questions on the FAA Private Pilot Knowledge Test. So today we're talking about LASSO, Land and Hold Short Operations. So Land and Hold Short Operations is just what it sounds like. It's an instruction from ATC for you to land and then hold short of what ATC advises you to hold short of. <clears throat> So generally, lasso is in effect when simultaneous takeoff and landing operations are being conducted on intersecting runways. As pilot in command, you have the final authority to accept or decline any lasso clearance. If you accept the lasso, ATC is specifically expecting you to acknowledge and read back all of the lasso clearance. And if you accept the lasso clearance, then you are responsible for adhering to that clearance, just like any other ATC clearance, unless an amended clearance is received. Now, if you've been given a lasso, you can still go around if necessary, right? You can always <clears throat> go around. One of the things to keep in mind if you are conducting a lasso is to beware of the reduced landing distance. So where can you find the available landing distance? Well, the information is likely in the ATIS, or you could ask the controller, I guess, or you could find it in the chart supplement. <clears throat> now on the ATIS, you will likely hear if lasso is in effect, you'll hear the runway and the landing distance available. So that's pretty convenient. It's all in one spot. Now we can hear what this sounds like on liveatc.net. So Chicago O'Hare routinely conducts lasso. So let's grab their ATIS from that website and listen for any lasso information. O'Hare International Airport ATIS information Alpha. One two five one two. Wind two four zero at four. Visibility one zero. Ceiling three zero south road. Temperature one six. Two point one two. Altimeter two minus minus five. AO2 sea level pressure 141. Arrival in back vector ILF runway 2, left and center approach. Visual approach runway 2, left and right. Visual approach runway 2, A, center. Land and hold short operations are in defect. Runway 2, left and center arrivals may be asked to hold short of MACUA Victor Victor for crossing traffic minus thousand. 725 feet available. Runway 2A, center arrivals may be asked to hold short of Hakua Zulu for crossing traffic. 9610. Feet available. Brief back on runway hold short instruction. Now on the ATIS, we hear them say lasso is in effect. They tell you what arrivals can be expected to hold short and why. In this case, it is holding short of a taxiway for crossing traffic. Then ATIS provides the landing distance available to the lasso hold point, in this case 9725 feet or 9610 feet. So as captain of the mighty Cessna 150, you need to decide if you can stop your aircraft in a little over 9500 feet. Now let's jump to the tower frequency and hear the ATC pilot communication regarding lasso. A couple of things we're listening for is the controller issuing a land and hold short clearance and the pilot repeating it back. Our American 2324 is Driscoll. American 2324 here, the wind 2203 running 27 centimeters land, hold short, exhibit for crossing traffic. So we clearly hear the controller issuing a lasso clearance and the pilot responding to it. Another way to find the lasso landing distance available is by referencing the chart supplement. It's that little green book or it's free online as well. If you're referencing the chart supplement, you can see on the airport diagram where the lasso line is on the runway. So in our Chicago example, the aircraft was cleared to land 27 center and to hold short of Victor Victor for crossing traffic. 
So here I have outlined the landing runway for that aircraft in green. And then in the blue box, you can see the lasso hold short line indicators, which are crossing the runway, which the aircraft needs to stop or exit the runway by. And then you can see taxiway Victor Victor right near the end of that runway where ATC has the traffic crossing. Then in the chart supplement for the airport, there's also a section called land and hold short operations if the airport has that. So you can see landing runway, <clears throat> the hold short point, so what point you will be holding short of, and the available landing distance. So we can see here for Chicago, 27 center, holding short of taxiway Victor Victor is 9,725 feet as the ATIS mentioned. Now if you aren't comfortable with the lasso clearance, then you can advise ATC that you cannot comply with it. ATC at that point will then communicate to you a new plan. Now because there are many things to consider with a lasso operation, it's good practice to review <coughs> your destination airport beforehand and then see if lasso is potentially an option. This way you can have it in mind as you get close to the airport, you know that we might, have, we might be cleared for lasso, and then you would have already checked your available landing distance, your landing performance data, and this way you aren't caught off guard at the last minute. <clears throat> so lastly, the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge has a nice list, which if complied with, they say will ensure lasso operations are conducted properly. So here's the list. Now it seems to me looking at this list uh, that the first four items on this list are more or less operational considerations when conducting lasso. And then the last four on the list seem to be like exceptions to using lasso. <clears throat> so let's look at these. So the first one, know your landing distance available. And then number two, be advised by ATC as to why lasso are being conducted. Um, right, so is it taxing aircraft like our example? Is it landing traffic on a crossing runway? You know, knowing the reason helps with situational awareness so you can be aware of what the other aircraft or vehicles are doing. Three, advise ATC if you cannot comply with lasso. And four, know what signs and markings are at the lasso point. <clears throat> and then the next four seem to be kind of like exceptions. So number five, lasso are not authorized for student pilots who are performing a solo flight. At many airports, Air carrier aircraft are not authorized to participate in lasso if the other aircraft is a GA aircraft. Seven, generally lasso are not authorized at night. And eight, lasso are not authorized on wet runways. So knowing these things will help ensure that lasso operations are conducted properly. So with that review in mind, with lasso, let's look at some potential questions from the private pilot knowledge test. So question number one, <clears throat> who should not participate in land and hold short lasso program? Student pilots, recreational pilots, or military pilots? So the correct answer here is A. Um, so student pilots or pilots who are not familiar with lasso should not participate in the program. So remember, if you aren't comfortable with stopping by the hold short point, maybe it's due to the landing distance available or maybe it's due to weather the pilot can advise ATC that you are unable to comply with the lasso clearance. So question number two, who has final authority to accept or decline any land and hold short clearance? The PIC owner operator or the second in command? Uh, A again is the correct answer. So the pilot in command has the final authority to accept or decline any land and hold short <coughs> clearance. And then the last one, um, what is the minimum visibility for a pilot to receive land and hold short clearance? Three nautical miles, three statute miles, or one statute mile? So the answer here is B, three statute miles. Remember visibility is reported in statute miles, not nautical miles. Um, so the minimum weather is a ceiling of at least a thousand feet and visibility of three miles. The idea of having basic VFR weather minima is to allow pilots to maintain visual contact with other aircraft and other ground vehicle during the operation. 
So there you go, everyone, a little information on Lasso. So thanks, everyone, for riding along today. We'll hope you join us on a future flight, and thanks for flying J1 Aviation.